we get into uh, Tennessee's basketball season. And as we look back over the year, we're going to get Ron Slay here in just a second. So hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, pick a word or two that you will use to describe this word. You picked historic. You've had a couple of days to think about it. Um, I, I just picked special. I thought it was a, a very fantastic season. Listen, you keep knocking on the door like this. You're probably going to break through at some point. And it sounds insane because I didn't think he was one of the top four or five players on Tennessee's team last year. But if they have Euros, is this a way different game? If he's just able to go and D up Edie? Euros Plasvic? No, because I mean, they maybe, but also if they just played a stroller or a walk of the whole game instead of a dude, they may actually win the game. So it's, um, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to come down on Ado more than people need to, but that was a transcendently bad performance yesterday. And so I, I don't by think Jonas it's, Adu. It's a diff- Yeah, by Jonas Ado. I mean, historically okay. bad. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not arguing with you. And a, a lot of the people on social media have agreed with you as well. So let's talk about Jonas Ado. I think it's a little too easy to throw it onto him. And yes, we know a walk about that. Um, but it's it's a little too easy to throw it on him because that's just a bad matchup. That's to me the equivalent of picking up a guy to run a race against Usain Bolt. I mean, that they, they are that different level wise. Jonas Adu may have played the very best he could play, but Caleb, it may not be enough to match up with uh, Edie. No, he didn't play the very best he could play. I'm sorry, he didn't. There are certain ways where he struggles to match up, but one of those ways, one of the things he can do, I never expected him to win the matchup with Edie. Never in a million years did I expect him to win the matchup with Edie. I didn't expect that. What you could do is, for instance, um, not go 0 of 4 from the field, which he did, and miss those little 10-foot floaters when they play off under the basket. You could do that. Um, You could also... Know that the, the biggest thing he did that was a problem is he let Edie position himself under the basket too often. Once you let Edie get under that circle, that's a problem. You have to you you can't let him get the ball in that situation. And he would let Edie back him down before he caught the ball. And my thought is once he gets to a certain level, you have to get in front of Edie and just hope that you can deny the pass deny the passing lanes. Because once he catches the ball in that position, you're screwed. Well, now let's, let's let's be careful here for a second, because again, that gets back to my point. Does Adu have the strength to keep Edie off of the – and I want to get to double team too, Robert. G- great call there. But does Edie have – does Jonas Adu have the strength to keep Edie off of the block? And then bef- I want to get into the officiating, and we're going to do that, so hang tight. But does he have the strength to keep him off the block? I mean, Edie's 240 pounds. He's a strong guy. Or I'm sorry, 300 pounds. Know. Yeah, excuse me. And, and Adu's what? About – 24260 I would look that, I'd have to look that up. I didn't expect it I mean I never expected him to have the strength to keep Edie off the block. What I'm saying is you have to be smart. Once he gets onto the block, you have to get in front of him because your best chance is to deny the pass to him at that point. You can't let him catch the ball at that moment. And again, again, I thought, I, I thought I he did not like, play smart defense. Again, I sound like Jonas Adu's agent here or his PR guy, but I do think, Caleb, you're being a, a little bit hard on him. He's 240 pounds. Uh, he's just – I think Tennessee was just limited when they went against Edie at that position. I think it's kind of like at times, especially in those first couple of seasons, now there there have been situations in which Tennessee has been bad in the secondary because of coaching. But there were situations in the first two seasons under Josh Heupel that they were bad because they just weren't good football players. Compared to Edie, Jonas Adu is just not a good basketball player. Compared to Edie. I didn't but I didn't expect him to get wrecked that badly. Again, the okay. biggest thing, you you have no you have there was no excuse for him missing those 10-foot floaters. That's what he does well, Adu. And he missed all I, of them. I have I have zero defense for him on the offensive side. I have zero defense for Sakai's uh, Ziegler. I have zero defense for any of those guys, uh, they they needed to be more on the move. Brought to you by Boundless Moving. Boundless Moving is who I use when uh, I made my most 
recent move, and I'll use them again. From their two-hour minimum to turnkey operations, they've got you covered. Uh, they are fantastic. They'll do it all or they'll do what you need. That's Boundless Moving. Go to Boundless Moving. Just Google Boundless Moving in North Carolina and all over East Tennessee as well. No, the offensive end was a train wreck. I mean, you can't argue with that at all. And if Tennessee plays a C-plus game offensively, they're winning that game, and we're talking about it was the final four. Final four. Now, as far as double-teaming Edie, I thought they should have done more of that. I don't know that it would have helped, but they started that early, and then they got away from it, and I didn't understand exactly why they got away from that. I... I they were getting wrecked on the boards. That's why they got away from it. When they were double teaming Edie, they were getting killed. They weren't getting any rebounds at that point. So they didn't really have a choice. That's why I think. And to explain that for those that may not know, you've got two, you you got two guys. If if he's playing one defensively, you've got one less guy to box out and go get a rebound. Yeah. And Purdue, they, they are very, very good at rebounding. Matt Painter, stresses that in practice a lot. So if you're going to double somebody, that a team like Purdue is going to get offensive rebounds after offensive rebounds. Now, agree. Um, I hope they do not remember this game for for all time. Well, he'll, he's coming back, so he's yeah. going to be fine. I'm just going to say this. The move on Edie, Wisconsin did it in the Big Ten tournament. Punk him. Punk him, cheap shot him, get him off his rhythm, and you actually have a chance. Tenet, Jonas Adu is not the one to do that because Jonas Adu is the one who got punked. Caleb and I talked at half, and I was joking, but apparently Caleb's kind of serious because uh, we were talking at half about what we were going to write. And I said, good gracious, you'd think they could just send a guy out there to take out his knees. I mean, if there were ever a situation where you would send a bench player out just to take out somebody, literally take out somebody like the Like old a Kurt Pistons. Rambis type. Kurt, Kurt Rambis is okay, but he was a decent player. But, yes, he did that. And I'm trying to think. The there, there's all kinds of hockey goon examples that I'm sure we could come up with. Was it Marty McSorley? But the, there's. There's a lot of guys back there, but uh, that I mean, just have a guy that comes in. He's twelfth guy on the bench, and he just is diving at Edie's knees. To the, I mean, you could do that. That would be awful, wouldn't it? You'd rather lose with some sportsmanship, correct? Well, I mean, there's Kinda. you know, if if he gets hurt, yeah, that 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 wouldn't look as. I mean, then Rick Barnes would have the most tainted national championship of all time if he won a national championship doing that. But I mean, it would be it's like not than, it's not worse than five downs. I mean, to be fair, like I mean, you know, I say this all the time, but the Saints and Drew Brees have the most tainted Super Bowl of all time. They literally won a Super Bowl because they purposely tried to knock Brett Favre out of a game, and I mean, they had a bounty on him, so. It's for all you Drew Brees as a Hall of Famer people. Um, but anyways, I'm yeah, not the as good. He's such the good vi- I mean, they're such a good villain now. They're they're paying private planes to fly their quarterbacks across the nation. They're suing the university. I mean, all of it. Just imagine how hated Tennessee would be by the sports community if they had a number 12 guy that just went out there and took out his knees. I'm talking Actually, about that. With- I know about a guy, Caleb, who's not even in shape. He needs to lose 20 or 30 pounds, and he's, he's all the way through basketball season. That guy. Dave, honestly, if they did that, they'd actually be the heroes. Have you seen the way other teams and other fan bases <laughs> talk about Edie? Everybody hates him. Everybody no, hates that was, Edie. Uh, it's, it was painful. Felt like I was pulling fingernails out watching that game. And that was yeah. what I, – I mean – We've gotten to be such a close community here that I've, I've I empathize and I sympathize for our, our Tennessee fans who are a part of it, and I've I just felt for them having to watch that game, knowing that you're going to lose for about the last ten minutes, but you still have to watch Edie go up and down the court, uh, and it just is awful. To me. 